This is video number four in our series of six. And this is probably the most common method used for supporting walls in a floor. This is the most common that I could think of, especially walls that are not going to be bearing walls. Now, again, we've got our, our soil in here. Let's remove it to give you a better idea of what we're looking at. Footings, walls. Now in this particular case, the wall is going to transfer the load to a doubler. This would be two joists nailed together that would be supported by two wall studs to take the load down. So again, we have a wall sitting on top of two floor joists, not one, and there's no wall underneath it to support it. So this is extremely common if you have walls that are not going to be bearing walls. But make no mistake, if you do have a wall that is a bearing wall and it's sitting on top of one joist, then uh, this is not going to be a happy situation. Uh, or if the wall's sitting on top of the plywood. I see this a lot. You'll just have a, you'll have a load bearing wall that's sitting on top of the plywood with nothing underneath it at all. And, uh, and it's really uh, not a good situation. And like I said, this is the most common uh, method used. If you are framing a floor, you do need to, um, the, usually the architect or the engineer will call out for, make sure there's a double joist underneath each um, wall that runs parallel to the joist. If they are running perpendicular, then, then it's being supported by a lot of different joists. If it's running parallel, then it could just be supported. It's just going to be supported by two joists. And you don't want it to be the next worst situation is one joist. And the absolute worst is to have it sitting on top of the sheathing without any support underneath it. This also is probably going to be fine to use the footings. You're not going to need to do any extra work for something like this again because you're not talking about a lot of weight you could act this could actually be considered a concentrated load if there was a lot of weight on it because you would have um, the footings wouldn't be able to carry it so it can carry it if it's equally distributed you can have it in the footing so a non-bearing wall uh, above a floor usually is going to be okay. This type of foundation and this type of framing is usually going to be okay. Once you start to put a load on it, then uh, it might require additional concrete. So that is about as simple as that can be. Like I said, this is a, a real common method. But I would like to point out one more thing, and that is, of course, that is, of course, if there was going to be any plumbing in this type of assist. If you if you needed to put pipes in this wall, then um, this doubler is going to get uh, gonna, this could be a problem. Obviously, the plumber would have to couldn't touch the doubler. You're not allowed to do this as a plumber. That is a no no. You could actually go in at an angle. So if you're putting a sink in and you're going to have a cabinet covering the uh, plumbing, then it would be okay to, to drill at an angle and, and come up into the wall to where you wouldn't touch the, the beam. But if you were actually venting from floor to floor or something where you had uh, a drain that needed to go down, uh, this could be a, a nightmare. This really could. Now, don't forget, this is where the planning comes in. Some engineers allow you to, if you have a plumbing wall, you can block between the joists. So, and I mentioned this in the last video, you could actually move the joists over. You could have this joist move over to here and this joist move over to here and then block in between it. And run, run, you would run your block 16 inches on center, um, as, as I described in the, in the last video. So you would have two joists and you would block in between each 16 inches on center except for where your pipe is going to come up and then the plumber would have a nice spot to go right into the wall and everything would be fine but 
remember the key to everything and I don't know how many times you're gonna hear me say this and you're gonna hear me say it a lot is planning so this would be a nightmare situation to come into and, and, and again I've seen it I've probably seen it at least 50 times minimum in my career I've seen a doubler in the way of a plumber because the framer knew what he was doing went ahead and built the wall and figured hey this would be great and then the plumber ends up cutting the doubler in half running a running the pipe up where where they wanted to run it anyway or needed to run it anyway and then the floor needs to be uh, fixed and sometimes it is a nightmare for uh, a uh, builder so anyway that's it for this video off to number five Go to the website for more videos on walls and engineering. I will also have a complete list of the videos in this series along with other videos that I have already made. Video.gregvan.com structural engineering or go to the gregvan.com website, any one of them, and look for the video box in the upper left-hand corner. Once you get to the video website, click on the structural engineering link and you should be good to go. You should be where you need to be.